Okay, guys. Um, so this is my daughter, Nancy Ruth. This is her birth story. Um, all right. So, Dobby. This is Dobby. Say hi, Dobby. Um, and this is Cristiano. Say hey, Chris. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Get down, guys. Um, so today I just kind of want to share with you guys how like things just really don't go as planned whenever you're um, going through your pregnancy and and uh, well sometimes they do go to plan and when you go to the hospital so with my first son Cristiano uh, I got the epidural you know whatever I'll make another video about his birth story later um, but with my daughter most recently with my daughter most recently um, she was already five days late on her due date and so the doctor told me that she was going to induce me like a week later well I went to the doctor to make sure that the baby was okay and they did an ultrasound and the ultrasound lady goes, yeah, sometimes I have luck uh, that, you know, doing the ultrasound and the movements will put the baby into, I don't know, make it uncomfortable, make it want to get out because of all the moving around. Like, Hold on. Okay. So, um, anyway, so... I went and I did that ultrasound and then I started feeling like really small contractions but I had already been feeling Braxton Hicks like a few days before that and the night before that and so I didn't want to like jinx anything I was I just didn't want to jinx it so I wasn't even timing them I was just kind of like all right whatever uh, and this was like 10 in the morning so then that night, like around 7, I was like, all right, I know that she's going to come today. I can feel it. I just know she's coming. And these contractions are getting a little bit stronger. And so I'm going to go ahead and take my son. My husband and I were like, all right, well, let's just call my mom and take Cristiano over to her house so that, you know, when this happens, we're prepared. And then we'll go to the hospital later this night when it gets worse. The contractions, when the contractions get worse. So then we take Cristiano over there, we drop him off, we come back, and it's probably around nine o'clock at this point. And I looked at Fran and it was like 10 o'clock. And I was like, all right, let's, uh, let's go. Let's go to the hospital. Let's see what they say. My water hadn't broken or anything. And you know, sometimes you get like a trickle. With my son, when my water broke, it was hardly anything. And, um, so I had like this trickling effect, but also there's leakage during pregnancy. So, I mean, it's hard to tell sometimes. Anyway, so I thought maybe it might've broken. Maybe it was just leakage. I just, I didn't know. So then what we did was we went to the hospital. They didn't admit me. They put me in like a holding room. I filled out all my paperwork and everything. They put me in a holding room and hook me up to like the monitors and everything to just make sure like you know they were real contractions and so I they asked me they said well what's your pain level on a scale of 1 to 10 and because I knew how bad contractions could get literally what I said to the lady was well considering that I know how bad that contractions can be I would say I'm probably around a 2 or a 3 right now and so uh, I guess she took that as I just had Braxton Hicks contractions and I get it like a lot of a lot of people that are pregnant with their first baby might go in and it's a false alarm and everything but I knew I knew I was I already knew I was gonna be back that night anyway so they sent me home I came home by that point it was past midnight it's probably going on one o'clock and um, we live like two minute drive from the hospital which is very fortunate and as soon as we got back I don't know the contractions just started getting worse and I called my doctor around two and I I told her well it was a doctor on call it wasn't my doctor 
and I told her what was going on and she was like, well, honey, you're, you're only two centimeters dilated, so, you know, try to take a warm bath. I can make you an appointment in the morning if you really think it's that bad. And I was crying on the phone with her. I was like, I just, I don't know, I really think, and she's like, well, I mean, if you really feel like it, come back in. So I felt like ashamed, like embarrassed. I didn't want to go in if it wasn't happening. But at the same time in my mind, I'm like, well, I know that it's happening. So I just waited it out. I took a warm bath. And then around like 4 o'clock, I was rolling around the bed in so much pain. And my water like gushed. I mean, it was just, my water broke. It just gushed everywhere. And so... <laughs> I, I like yelled to my husband, I was like, Fran, tenemos que ir al hospital, yeah, yeah, nístate. And so I was just like, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta get to the hospital, get ready. And so, um, hey baby. And, come here. And so, um, say hi. Yeah. And so we get in the car, we go to the hospital. We get out, we're walking in, and they're like, hey, you know, you got to fill out your your paperwork. And I was like, I I literally, I cannot write right now. I can't. I can't. I, you got to find it from before. And so then they put me in another freaking holding room. And I'm like, dude, can you not see? Like, I'm clearly in labor. And um, anyway, so I had no patience at this point. And we were in the holding room again, and I told them, I was like, give me an epidural, give me an epidural, give me an epidural. And they were like, yeah, well, we need to take your, yeah. They said, we need to take your blood first, you know, to make sure you can, you can get one. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, <laughs> and so they were like, we need to take your blood first to make sure you can get one. And my veins are, like, extremely hard to, like, take blood out of and put an IV in and stuff. And so we got to the hospital, y'all. We got to the hospital at 5 o'clock. The lady checked me in the holding room, and she goes, 5 o'clock a.m., and she goes, all right, well, you're only four centimeters dilated. And the nurses were literally saying, like, and they were saying stuff like, Oh, this must be her first baby because she's in so much pain and she's only four centimeters dilated and stuff like that. And it just made me feel like really bad. I was like, wow, it gets worse than this. <laughs> and so um, they were they finally admitted me and they were like, okay, well, well, they tested my the liquid from my water breaking and they were like, okay, yeah, her water broke. Um, and then so they were like, we need to put her in a delivery room. So they moved me on the delivery bed to, to move me into the delivery room. And as soon as I, like, switched from, like, the stretcher bed that they push you on onto the delivery bed, I told them, I said, I need to push. Like, she is coming right now. Give me an epidural, please. Give me the epidural. I was screaming. I was so uncomfortable, so in so much pain. And, um... He's going to tell you the rest. Um, anyway, so I was in so much pain. And then they finally, they were just like, you can't push. You can't push. And I said, no, no. I, I have to. And uh, and they said, all right, well, we can't give you an epidural. And, and the lady felt. And she goes, all right, she's complete. She's complete. So out came little Miss Nancy Ruth. No epidural. No nothing. Um... My doc there was no doctor, no doctor delivered her. It was just like ten nurses that rushed in. Um, so I mean, my story really didn't go as planned. And I just remember feeling like so frustrated and so mad during everything. But as soon as she came out, y'all, it was over. She was so beautiful. Uh, she still is. she's gorgeous. And, uh, I don't know, I just, I just wanted to share that with you guys because sometimes, you know, I, I went into this thinking I'm totally getting an epidural, it's gonna happen, and then it didn't. 
But I'm proud of myself for making it through. Uh, there may have been some cursing and some, you know, moving of the arm, flailing of the arms and stuff during everything, but uh, I made it to the other side. So anyways, now I'm gonna show you the precious little angel that is the star of the story. So hold on, I'll be right back. All right guys, so this is little Nancy Ruth. Say hi Nancy, hello. Hello Nancy Ruth, hi. Hi. Her hair is so crazy y'all, it does not stay down worth anything. Um, but anyways, thank you for watching and uh, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're a mom out there going through pregnancy, the thought of doing it without an epidural sounds like, you know, Amazon woman and, and great. And that's awesome if you want to do that, if you're curious to doing it without the epidural. I was curious about it, but I had already made up my mind that I was just going to do it anyways, get the epidural, um, even though it didn't work out that way. And uh, I would just say, you know, be ready, be ready. But, um, but yeah, it's good. I mean, you can make it, you can survive. It's, it's tough, but you'll get there. Um, anyways, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below and I will get back to you. And I think my next story will be, um, my birth story for my son, Cristiano, which is an interesting story as well. Um, all right, guys. Love y'all. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.